Okay, let's have a look at three practical situations where we use change in enthalpy. In our first question, we're asked which of the following reactions are endothermic or exothermic. In our first question, it says that we have a delta H value for the combination of um, sulphur dioxide plus oxygen to give us sulphur trioxide. We have a negative 198 kilojoules per mole for our delta H value. If it's a negative value, we have an exothermic reaction. It's giving heat out to the environment. In our second equation, we've got sodium nitrate dissolving in solution, so solid giving us potassium ions and nitrate ions. In this case, our delta H value is plus 35 kilojoules per mole. That plus indicates that we have an endothermic reaction or an endothermic process. In our third one, we've got ammonium, ammonia dissolved in solution, and we've also got hydrochloric acid in solution. They combine to give us an ammonium ion in solution and a chloride ion in solution. And in this case, our delta H value is negative 52 kilojoules per mole. Once again, because we've got that negative value, we have an exothermic reaction. Our second part to this says, if the reactions were placed in a thermally insulated container, which which of them would show an increase or a decrease in temperature? We know if we've got a negative value and an exothermic reaction, it's going to give heat out to, to the environment. In other words, the temperature of the environment that the reaction is taking place in will increase. So the first reaction will have an increase in temperature. In contrast, if we have an endothermic reaction, it's going to feel cold, so it's going to take heat from the environment, so the temperature will drop. And in our third one, we've got an exothermic reaction once again. It's going to give heat out, therefore the measurement that we make will be an increase in temperature. In our second type of situation, we can take a chemical reaction and we can calculate uh, the enthalpy of the reaction or the change in enthalpy per mole of reactants or products. So our question says, calculate the delta H value, and it should be per mole, when 0.5 grams of magnesium is burnt in air and produces 12.4 kilojoules of heat. So the first thing we need to do is write a balanced equation. So magnesium plus oxygen gives you magnesium oxide, a one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one relationship. We then need to calculate the moles of magnesium that we've actually burnt. So we've got 0.5 grams over the molar mass of 24.3 grams, which gives us 0 0.0206 moles of magnesium that we've burnt. Then the final step is to calculate our delta H value per mole, and we could do it either per mole of oxygen or per mole of magnesium. If we're talking about a combustion reaction, we usually do it in terms of what's been combusted. So we set up a simple ratio mechanism here. We've got our delta H value and the number of moles that we have. So we're given 12.4 kilojoules of heat for every 0 0.0206 moles of magnesium that are burnt. We want to know how many, or, or the delta H value, the change in enthalpy, for one mole. So our unknown is X. If we cross multiply through these values, we get 0 0.0206 times x on here is equal to 1 mole times the 12.4. And if we rearrange for x and complete our calculation, we get a value of 601.94 kilojoules. The last step that we need to put down is whether this value indicates that we've got an exothermic or endothermic reaction. And to determine that, we need to go back to our, the wording in our question. In this case, it said it produced heat, therefore it's giving heat out to the environment. So in this case, our reaction is an endothermic reaction, so we need to put a negative value for the, magnesium, for the, the delta H value. So our final step says, per mole of magnesium, we have 602 kilojoules of heat given out when we combust the magnesium. Our third question is much more complex. It involves a few steps. 
We're told that we have 4.22 grams of sodium thiosulfate pentahydrate, and this was dissolved in 50 mils of water. Both were at room, temp room temperature of 19.3 degrees C. When the sodium thiosulfate pentahydrate was put into the water, the temperature fell to 15.7 degrees. We're asked to calculate the enthalpy of the solution. In other words, the process where we put our sodium thiosulfate pentahydrate into water and it dissolves into its requisite ions. So our sodium ions, our thiosulfate ions, and our liberated water molecules. So we want to calculate the delta H for this dissolution process. So let's see what's actually happening. So I've drawn a little diagram, and we're going to make some assumptions. The first one is that we have a closed system. So we put our sodium thiosulfate pentahydrate into our water, and it dissociates, and the heat either given off or absorbed comes from the system itself, not from the exterior environment. We also assume that there's constant a constant pressure in the system as well. So what's our first observation? Well, we have a temperature drop, which indicates that from the water, from the 50 mils of water, heat is being given to this system to allow the reaction or the process to occur. So we actually have an endothermic process. Heat is given out from the water or the environment into the system to be absorbed by this system. If it was the reverse process, we would see our water heat up. So we'll bear that in mind as we step through this problem. Our first step is to determine the heat transfer from the water to the reaction. So we're given a mass of 50 mils of water. If we assume that the density of water is one gram per mil, that gives us 50 grams of water. We've got an initial temperature of 19.3 degrees. We've got a final temperature of 15.7. We've got a, um, a heat capacity for water of 4.18 joules per Kelvin per gram. We want to know what the Q value is, the heat or the change in heat. So we have an equation MC delta T, and we put our numbers in, and we get a value of minus 752.4 joules. First observation, this would tell us that we might have an exothermic reaction. But let's think about what's happening. We're actually losing water from the, sorry, we're losing heat from the water to allow this reaction to occur. We've actually got a plus 752.4 joules being absorbed by this system. So it's the plus value that we need because we have an endothermic process. Second step we need to do is determine the number of moles of sodium thiosulfate pentahydrate. 4.22 grams over 248.2 grams per mole. Which gives us 0 0.017 moles of... Um, sodium thiosulfate pentahydrate. And our last step is to determine the delta H value per mole of sodium thiosulfate pentahydrate. In this case, we take our um, heat that's been absorbed by sodium thiosulfate pentahydrate, divide it by the number of moles that we determined were in the system, and we get a value of plus 4.4 by 10 to the fourth joules, or 44 kilojoules per mole of sodium thiosulfate pentahydrate. So for every mole of this that we put into water, we will need 44 kilojoules of heat for, for the process to occur.